All right, what do we mean by inequalities and, or equalities and inequalities? Section 1.5 is graphing linear inequalities, but think, I think we need to think real quick about what we mean by the other stuff and then how that leads into graphing linear inequalities, okay? So what is the solution to x plus 4 equals 15? Well, many of you could figure this out without doing any, um, doing very much math here, but if you subtract 4 from both sides, you get that x is 11, okay? And so how do we represent that visually? Well, we go out, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and we put a dot there, okay? Simple way to visualize the solution to that equation. What is the solution to the equation y equals x minus 3? Well, we talked about in the last video, um, we talked about it being, um, it, we had to represent all of the x's and y values that make that a true statement, like 0, uh, negative 3, for instance. That's a, a set of um, x and y's that makes that a true statement. We had to visualize that with a line, okay? So x minus 3, we took and we said, well, I'll go down 3. That's your y-intercept. And then the slope is 1, so it looks something like this. This is all the solutions to that equation. What about this inequality, x is greater than 2? Well, we've already talked about this a couple of times. You go out to 2, and it's like, how do you represent all the numbers that are greater than 2? Well, put an open dot there, because 2 is not included, and then we shade everything to the right. Okay, now we're going to go into this example here, and I don't know why it says toggle images and animation. Let's see if we can reset this here. No, no, no. Sorry. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's try this one more time. All right. What is the solution to the inequality y is greater than or equal to x minus 3? So here um, we had this line. This was all the solutions, all the x, y values that made this statement true. Okay. Um, now we have this inequality, and your intuition should be that, you know, there's going to be a lot more values that make this statement true. Or at least we're not going to be able to use just a line. So for instance, 0, 0, if you plug in 0 here, you're going to get 0 equals negative 3. That is not true, right? But if you plug in 0 here, you'll get 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. That is true. 0 is greater than negative 3. So 0, 0 will work, okay? So this is greater than or equal to. So that means that all values that would work on this line up here are also going to work for this inequality, okay? So we can sketch that line in. And since 0, 0 works, we'll talk about this in a minute, but since 0, 0 works, all of these values up above the line are going to work as well. So if you plug in, you know, um, 1, and, 1 comma 1, or you know, what's, what's a better one? Um, that's fine. 1 comma 1. So that would be um, negative 2 is less than negative 2 is less than 1. It's like, yeah, that's, that's true, or 1 is greater than negative 2. So that's true as well. So all, it turns out that all of these points above this line and all the points including the line are part of the solution set there. So it's like, I have this inequality. How do I represent it visually, represent the solutions to it visually? And I do that by shading. Okay, so I shade above the line because all of those values satisfy the inequality. And you can check me if you want by testing the infinite number of x, y coordinates that are above the graph there or above the line okay so how do we graph this inequality then graph the inequality of y is greater than negative 3x minus 2 in the last example that line that i put on there was called the boundary line okay and it was solid because we said all the values on the line <coughs> will make the inequality true in this one we have greater than so not equal to the line so the line is still helpful it gives us the boundary but that will not um be the um, but we will not draw a solid line because the values on the line don't make it a true statement. So we're going to go y-intercept is negative 2, so we'll go to negative 2 here. All right? And the slope is negative 3, so that means we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, and over 1. So there's our slope. And then that's going to be dotted. So we've got a dotted line here. A little arrow there. A little arrow there. All right? And then what I typically do is test a point. So let's test the point above or below the line. Oh, by the way, um, so like I usually pick 0, 0. 0, 0 is above the line. So let's test that point by plugging it in. So I got 0 is greater than 0 times negative 3, which is 0, minus 2. So is 0 greater than negative 2? Yeah, it is. Okay, so that means that this line, or that we shade above the line. Okay, so not too bad. This next one, you should go ahead and try it. 
see how you do. I'll speed up the video here and um, you can check your answer. Okay. Um, you will want to get this in point, uh, sl or excuse me, slope intercept. All right, so I got the line on there. Now I'm going to test a point. Now, zero, 0, is below the line. We could use zero, 0, if we wanted, but we can pick any point that's clearly above the line, too. So maybe we pick, like, um, 1, comma 1. So if I plug in 1, 1 up here, I get 1 plus 4 is less than 2. I get 5 is less than 2. And that is not true. And you could check if you put 0, 0 in there. 0 is less than 2. That is true. So that's below the line, so we need to shade over here. A little bit tricky with the fraction there. Be careful, 2 over 4 is a half, and then there's a 1 here that we never write. 1 divided by 4 is just a fourth, so you can leave it like uh, like this here. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now, this one shouldn't take as long as the last one. You might, again, pause and try, but y is greater than or equal to 5. That's just negative 5, excuse me. That just means we're going to graph the line y equals negative 5, like this. And then it's greater than or equal to that, so it's a solid line, and we're going to shade above it. Again, you could pick a point if you wanted, but you don't need to. It just says greater than, so you know it's going to be above the line. We could do the same thing with x's, too, if we wanted to. All right. So let's look at this word problem here. A recreation center, in fact, let's even move it over here more. A recreation center. Um, offers various 30 minute and 60 minute art classes. The recreation director has allotted up to 20 hours per week for art classes, represent these constraints with an inequality and determine if the director can schedule 25, 30 minute classes and 15, 60 minute classes. Okay, so here's how we're gonna approach this. The constraint is just gonna be a line. And I'll show you what that is in a second. So the way I think about this is we, um, we're gonna pick a scale first and label our axes, okay? So on the x-axis, let's put the number of 30-minute um, art classes, okay? So on the x, we'll have number of 30-minute classes, okay? On the y, we'll put number of 60-minute classes, okay? so. She has 20 hours per week, all right? And what I'm thinking here is if she has no 30-minute classes, she has just 60-minute classes, then, in other words, if on the x-axis is 0, then the y-axis can be up to 20. So let's go by 5s here. 5, 10, 15, 20, okay? So we know if there's 0 30-minute classes, there's 20 60-minute classes. And on the x-axis here, we know that um, if there's zero um, hour-long classes, zero 60-minute classes, then she could schedule 40 30-minute classes, all right? So again, if we go by fives, so I'll just label one thing here, five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. We know that here is the other point. And then there's plenty of pl spaces in between here, but we can just connect the line and that's our constraint, okay? So those points represent all of the possible values um, for classes that she can schedule. Now, she could schedule or for, that, that will equal 20 hours, okay? So if we schedule less than that, that's fine. So actually, we could shade all of this, okay? And then... You don't necessarily need to know this for this problem, but the equation that we're using is going to be, um, well, you, you don't need it for this problem. So we'll just leave it like this. So there's our line. That's our constraint. Everything less than that will be equaling less than 20 hours. All right. And so then we want to check is the point 15, I'm sorry, 25, 15, is that underneath of the line? And you go 5, 10, 15, 20. Let's go a different color. Um, you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then up 1, 2, 3, or in other words, 5, 10, 15, you see the point is up here. So no, she cannot schedule that number of classes. All right. And in the future section, we'll talk more about how to get that line with an equation or whatever. But this one, we can just kind of use the graph and our reasoning skills to figure out 
where we should be, uh, what are the possible um, combinations that she can have her um, art classes. And that's it for um, graphing linear inequalities. Oh, I should say one other thing. Um, you can do it in your graphing calculator. Um, I like doing it by, by hand and just using the boundary line because sometimes the graphing calculator can be confusing. But um, I will show you how to do that in class or on Google Meet at some point. Um, you may remember from Algebra 1 as well. So that's it for graphing linear inequalities.